when point 0.9 goes over solving these polynomial inequalities algebraically and graphically. So when we do this, we're going to treat this the same exact way that we have been doing them, except now we're graphing them. When we graph a, sorry, when we graph an inequality or an equation that has an x squared on it, it's a parabola. So it looks like a u. You have to make sure you pay attention to whether or not that u opens upward or opens downward. If it opens up, that a value is going to be positive. If it opens down, it's going to be negative. So if you look at examples 1 and 2 here, that a on number 1 is 3, that's a positive, so that problem is going to open up. If you look at 2, that 2 is your a, so again, it's positive, so that parabola will open up. I'm not necessarily worried about what your parabola looks like, just as long as it goes through the x-axis where it's supposed to, and it opens the correct way. So if we look at example 1, we have 3x squared minus 14x is greater than or equal to 5. Do what you know how to do. Move that 5 over, and then solve by factoring. If we move that 5 over, we're just going to subtract each side with the 5. So this leaves us with 3x squared minus 14x minus 5 is greater than or equal to 0. To solve this, take your a term and your c term and multiply them. a times c here is negative 15. Your factors of negative 15 that add up to be a negative 14 are 1 and negative 15. So we're going to replace that negative 14 with the 1 and the 15, keeping them with an x. So it's going to be 3x squared minus, or sorry, plus x minus 15x minus 5 is greater than or equal to 0. From here, you have four terms, so factor by grouping. Put a set of parentheses around the first two terms and a set around the last two terms. You're going to factor out an x from the first two. You're going to factor out a negative 5 from the second two. So this is going to factor out to be x times 3x plus 1 minus 5 times 3x plus 1 is greater than or equal to 0. From here, we're going to have x minus 5 as well as 3x plus 1. When you solve both of these for that, that x, you're going to have x minus 5 is equal to 0 and 3x plus 1 is equal to 0. Remember when we solved these, just the inequality, we turned that inequality into an equation and treated it like an equation. From here, move the 5 over, add it to both sides. We get x is equal to 5. Move the 1 over. We get 3x is equal to negative 1. Then divide each side by that 3. You get that x is equal to negative 1 third. So these two x is equal to are your x-intercepts. So this just means that you have two ordered pairs on this graph where this line or this parabola goes through the graph at 5, 0 and negative 1 third, 0. So if you find these two on your x-axis, that negative 1 third, 0 is going to be about here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and that 5, 0 is going to be here. Now, from here, it's an x squared. So this is a parabola. It looks like a u. We said that that u opens upward. So it's just going to look like this. Now, what's your answers here? What you're really looking at now from this point is that inequality sign. You have that that trinomial is greater than or equal to zero. So those x values that are being covered on this, this graph are anything that's greater than what you have where that line crosses the x-axis. So those x-axis or those x values that are greater are literally just these. So you could leave it like this, and then if you were to write it in interval notation, you would just have negative infinity up to the negative one-third. It includes that negative one-third with a union of 5 to positive infinity. 
So now this is just another way of graphing it to get our solution. For number two, we have 2x squared minus 3x is less than or equal to negative 6. So for this one, we're going to move that negative 6 over by adding it to both sides. We have 2x cubed minus 3x plus 6 is less than or equal to 0. From here, if you multiply the 2 and the 6, you get 12. There's no factors of 12 that add up to be a negative 3. So when this one happens, you're going to solve this by using your quadratic formula. So remember that negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2 times a. Okay, so from here we're going to use the quadratic formula. This is just going to give us the opposite of negative 3, which is 3, plus or minus the square root of 3 squared, which is 9, minus 4 times 2 times 6. 4 times 2 is 8 times 6 gives us 48. So it's 9 minus 48 all over 2 times a, which is 4. That 9 minus 48 gives us negative 39. So that's x is equal to 3 plus or minus the square root of negative 39 all over 4. That negative comes out as i. So this is 3 plus or minus i square root 39 all over 4. Now that 39 is just 3 and 13. It doesn't have two factors that are the same number, so you can leave it the square root of 39. So your answers here for this one would be no solution because the graph or the line will not touch that x-axis. So with these, whenever you get something to where that i is in your answer, it's going to automatically be no solution and you do not have to graph it. For example, 3, we have x squared minus 5x plus 6 is less than or equal to 0. So think of your factors of 6. You have 1 and 6, 2 and 3. Are any of them going to be the same signs that add up to be a positive, or sorry, add up to be a negative 5 but multiply to be a positive 6? If you had negative 2 and negative 3, those add up to be negative 5. So this is going to factor out to be x minus 2 times x minus 3 is less than or equal to 0. You set these both equal to 0 and solve for x. You're going to have x is equal to 2 and x is equal to 3. When you graph these, you are going to have ordered pairs at 2, 0, and at 3, 0 that go through that x-axis. If you want to be a little bit more precise, you can and find your, y, your y-intercept as well. You just plug in 0 for x and solve for, for y or get your constant by itself. You plugged in 0 here for x and it was y is equal to x squared minus 5x plus 6. You get a y is equal to 6. So you would also have a y-intercept here of 6, which means your line would look similar to this. Now, if you look back at that inequality sign, it's less than or equal to. So if it's less than or equal to, you're going to shade below where that crosses that y-axis, or that x-axis, I'm sorry. So the only parts that are solutions here are the part that's in between those two x-intercepts that are below the x-axis. So if you have an answer like this, you're going to give the 2 and the 3, and it would include them so there would be brackets on it. For number 4, we have 6x minus 3y is greater than or equal to 15. With this one, we can just get y by itself and replace the y with 0, and it'll be the same exact thing. It'll also give us a linear function since it's just x, not x squared. So with this one, we're going to subtract that 6 from each side. I'm sorry, that 6x from each side. We get negative 3y is greater than or equal to negative 6x plus 15. 
We divide each side by that negative 3. Remember, when we divide each side by a negative with an inequality, we flip that inequality sign. So we have y is less than or equal to positive 2x minus 5. Now, if we were to find for the x-intercept, we can do so by plugging in 0 for y. And it's just going to be 0 is less than or equal to 2x minus 5. We get that x by itself. We would move the 5 over by adding it to both sides. So we're going to have 5. We can change it into an equation. It's equal to 2x. And then we divide each side by the 2. So x is going to equal 2 and 1 half. This just means that we have a y-intercept of negative 5 since y is less than or equal to 2x minus 5, and that negative 5 is your b. So you'd have one point here, and then that 2 and 1 half is going to be your x-intercept, so that's here. If you want to use your slope to find the points between these, you can do so. You draw your line through your points, and your line's going to look similar to this. Now, look back at your sign, your inequality sign. You have y is less than or equal to 2x minus 5. Now, if you think back to, like, algebra 1, you'll remember that when you're graphing these linear functions and you have inequalities with them, you're shading either below the line that you graphed or above it. If y is less than or equal to it's going to be below that line. So we look at that line, we would shade below it. So if we shaded below it, what x values are being covered? Your x values that are being covered are anything that's from that 2 and 1 half to positive infinity. So your, in, your interval notation for this would just be that 2 and 1 half or 5 over 2 comma infinity with the bracket on the five, and the 5 over 2 and the parentheses on the infinity. For your last example, number 5, we have x squared minus 4x plus 6 is greater than or equal to 0. For this one, there's no factors of 6 that add up to be that negative 4, so use your quadratic formula. You're going to have x is equal to the opposite of b, which is a positive 4, plus or minus the square root of negative 4 squared, which is 16, minus 4 times 1 times 6, which is negative 24, all over 2 times a, so that's 2. That's 16 minus 24 is negative 8, so x is equal to 4 plus or minus the square root of negative 8, all over 2. That square root of that negative 8 is going to give us 4 plus or minus i times 2, or so 2i times the square root of 2 all over 2. And I just got that by taking the factors of 8, which are 2, 2, and 2. The two 2's pair up, 1 stays underneath the radical. So the 2 on the bottom is going to cancel out with the 4 and the 2 on top. This becomes a 1, this becomes a 1, the 4 becomes a 2. So that's just 2 plus or minus i square root 2. This is an imaginary number, so do we have a solution to where this parabola would cross the x-axis? No, so it's just no solution. If there is an i in an equation or for your solution, it's automatically no solution. So we didn't have to do the extra... The graphing it? Nope, you don't even have to graph it. Simplifying to put the 2 into the 4 and the other 2? We didn't have to do that? No. Yep, yep.